Quickies. See ya. Lindsay. <laughs> I want to thank you, Sia, because you have just been such a bright light in 2020. You have spread so much awareness, so much needed messaging on all platforms. And then you dropped this amazing song together, which I know is from your movie music. I have to make sure I say that correctly. <laughs> which you- how to confuse people. <laughs> Don't worry, how to make it the most simple thing ever to communicate. You'll um, hear me pause slightly before it, the whole interview. But I know you wrote, directed, produced, and wrote the soundtrack, but that was like later. That was like 2007. So I wondered, is Together a response to 2020 or is it just like amazing timing and you wrote that song a super long time ago? It's amazing timing. Ah, really? Yep. How long ago did you write this song? Four years ago. I did the music video four years ago, which is why nobody's wearing masks in it. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I shot the movie four years ago and then it took me three or, well, maybe five now. And it took me three, three or four years to edit to the point that I was, I felt happy with it, um, that I felt proud of it. I guess it's from being in the business a long time, I finally developed patience. And, you know, I remember being a kid and writing a song and thinking, great, let's put this out tomorrow and not understanding and knowing that most people have no understanding of what goes into putting out a song and how there's all sorts of people in suits sitting around table, 150 of them talking about the strategy behind (laughs) uh, what day to release it because what, you know, what the weather's going to be like that day and who's releasing that same day or the day, you know, or the week after or the week before and, who you know, there's so much silly strategy that goes into it oh we've got to make a video for it that does this that and the other or you know and or oh and let's partner with these people oh and let's partner with this like oh and let's partner with this commercial that'll help people will strategize for sometimes up to six months before they release a song just a song and um and i know that people at home just don't know that and i didn't know that when i first started Mm -hmm. making music it was and it was totally infuriating i was like what (laughs) <laughs> we have to wait for all of these people in suits to decide when my when my song can come out. And it used to make me crazy. But, you know, I, I've been in the business now such a long time that now I know that songs just come out when they're supposed to. And I, I've just a- applied the same mentality to the movie because, you know, obviously it's been pushed back a couple months um, already now um, because mm-hmm. of COVID. And now I don't even tell people a date that it's going to come out. I'm just really excited that it's coming out. I'm excited that it's coming out on the big screen, on the biggest screen, which is every (laughs) filmmaker's big dream. It's coming out on IMAX. And now I know to say to people, we don't know when it's coming out, but we know it's coming out after Tenet. So (laughs) Tenet (laughs) coming out first and then music is coming out. So once, once Tenet has come out, because I don't want to put it out when it's not safe, you know. I want everyone to be safe and I, want, I don't want people to die because we want to put out our movie and hurry up about it. That would be really counterproductive, certainly Absolutely. not the message that I've been trying to send my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> death, death to you all. Um, oh, so, no. uh, so um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting patiently until, you know, the universe says it's, it's safe. Well, I think the universe picked the perfect time for Together to drop because it's just a cool? feel-good message that we needed. I just heard it and went, that is brilliant. And I mean, talk about the universe just knowing what we yeah. need. It was amazing. I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah, that's how I tend to feel. And I try and work that way now just because it's easier. It's less frustrating to just believe that things are going to come out exactly as they are supposed to. If you lose a location during um, your movie shoot, and you have to quickly find up, find another location. I had to just quickly pivot and just be like, this is because this location is going to look better on screen in the end. I just changed my thinking around things, my reactions around things. Then it made the movie making process a dream. Absolutely. That's the way to think the positivity. So I want to play a little game with you, Sia. It's called Kenzie's Quickies. Fun. Rapid fire questions that are fun to know you better. It's the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? Okay. Oh my God, this is so dangerous because no, I'm going to have to lie. I'm sure I'm going to have to lie at some point and I'm going to be bad at it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Go ahead, lie. I don't care. We love you. Um, <laughs> I'll support you lying to me anytime. I don't want to tell the truth, but I know <laughs> it's <or> not. <laughs> 
Okay, are you ready? Kenzie's quickies. You've worn, obviously, extravagant outfits, wigs, bows, out, like insane outfits. What is the biggest wardrobe malfunction you've ever had? Oh, when I was like 18, I went with my mum mom to this wine bar. So like I came, grew up in a, basically a country town called Adelaide and it was the only wine bar in Adelaide and I was wearing a sarong skirt. I stood up to get my mum another glass of wine. As I was walking, my heel stepped on the bottom of the sarong skirt and pulled it down and in the middle of a bar full of people, but not full enough that they're all standing squished together and I'm walking through them, just full at the bar and then <laughs> people sitting at all the tables. And I stepped on my sarong skirt and I happened to be wearing a pair of underpants that I'd bought for 30 cents from Cunningham's Warehouse. That oh, no. That on them. And that definitely had a hole. And I like scooped my skirt up really quickly and I tied it back on and I quickly scurried back to my mum and I said, did anyone see? Did anyone see? And she looked around and she was like, I don't think anyone's seen. I don't think anyone. And then she was like, oh, see, somebody's seen. Somebody's seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked over and someone was just pissing themselves laughing in the corner. Oh, no. Um, and then the whole, when I last started laughing with them, then the whole restaurant burst out laughing. So everyone had seen my tennis racket undies. But that was my worst wardrobe malfunction, and it happened way before I was famous. So ha ha. No, who would have thought at a wine bar and at a red yeah. carpet event? <laughs> Yeah, so a real cheek rosener. Yeah. Well, at least like the universe did it uh, pre-Snapchat. You know, they really took care of you. So lucky. I'm so lucky. Most of the terrible or embarrassing things that I've done or been a part of like pre-Snapchat and pre-Instagram. <laughs> you lucky. are very lucky. Yeah, I mean, I, after I got sober, Instagram came up. So my life has been just like lying down and watching television and loving on dogs and stuff since then. So, haha, catch me <laughs> <I> <laughs> again. <love it. laughs> Uh, you have written for Beyonce, Kanye West, Rihanna, Katy Perry, yourself. What is your favorite song that you've written? Oh, that's an interesting one. Well, for for another person, it probably be um, probably be Diamonds and or Pretty Hurts for Beyonce. I like oh, I like the message of Pretty Hurts the best, and I kind of I oh, I had kind of sellers remorse about giving that one away. Um, really even to yeah, Beyonce yeah I know I love her and that's why I did it because I my dream when I first started songwriting for other people was I just wanted to get a song with Eminem and a song with Beyonce and then my dreams will have been made and I did both of those things and but that was pretty hurts so yeah. <laughs> I had to give away a good one um Beyonce's not going to just pick up any old crap no so, kidding uh, yeah, so, but, so I did I had to give up a good one that I, that was meaningful to me and so I did I liked that song a lot and then of my own is probably it's just got to be chandelier and I it's because it changed the course of my life and now it's meant that I have this relationship with this little person who just was a little tiny dancer in a blonde wig at the time and who's <laughs> blossomed into this incredible woman very grateful for our relationship and also and our working relationship too and I just keep trying to protect her by I just continuously write her new projects to do that I'll direct her in <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of your little protege, Maddie Ziegler, that is the only person you follow on Instagram. It was her birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> because she actually does red carpets, unlike me. She actually gets sent, like, free everything. There's nothing material you could buy her. So I was like, ah, I'm always thinking of what can I give her that's meaningful. And, you know, kids are such dorks. Uh, so right. I gave her my follow. That was my Christmas. <laughs> that was my birthday present to her this year. That's amazing. Last year, last year. Her birthday's coming up. She'll be 18 on September the 30th. That's insane. Isn't it? Oh my gosh, that doesn't even seem real. That doesn't seem possible. She was 11 when she did Chandelier. Oh my 11. gosh. If you had to follow one other person on Instagram, who would it be? Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry for taking so long. My no, you're fine. Live, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you're good. I, have, I will wait on Sia any day in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the Obamas. 
you know, or I thought you were going to say M and M after your last comment. <laughs> no, because I now I want. I mean, well, maybe it would even just be Kim Kardashian these days. <laughs> she's got the loudest voice in the world of prison reform, and that's something that I'm passionate about. Obviously, it's, it's not like she's the only person that's ever done that. But of course, there's been plenty, plenty of black people that have been doing it for years and years and haven't gotten the accolades. But she is at least trying to use her power for good and not evil. So I, I guess I love that about her and I love that she's trying to turn her fame into something amazing with prison reform and getting her law degree and everything is impressive. So maybe it would be her or as I want, I'd want to follow someone that, because obviously there's plenty of like politicians or, or activists that I could follow. I don't know how influential I am in having other people follow them if they've never heard of them or anything. So it's sort of like trying to spread the most good to the Absolutely. most people. But yeah, I really know how to answer a question <laughs> with a thousand words. <laughs> I love it. Some people just say yes and no to me, so I love this. Quick fire, quick fire questions. It's It's mild fire. It's mild fire. fire. So fire. (laughs) Mild fire is good. Your name has been used in tons of songs and analogies and lyrics. What is your favorite lyric with your name in it? I like uh, Kanye's one about North, my daughter, see her, you see her, you can't see her. And then I like, um, I like this, what are those two girls called? They're super cute girls. And that uh, Tina, Tia and Tamara, I think is the song. Um, mm-hmm. or maybe it's not, but anyway, it's really two awesome, cute rap girls. Um, and they said it a lot of times. And the whole song <laughs> is just things that rhyme with ear. So <laughs> I feel bad. Like I got, I can't remember, but yeah. And then last one, one word to describe 2020. Okay. Oh yeah. I found the Chia Tamara song. Oh, are you Googling? It's by Doja Cat and Rico Nasty. She rocks a bob like Sia. I rock a bob like Sia. And then she does another one where she says it as well. It's like, I like that my name rhymes with Ikea, Aaliyah. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, my, my my person looked it up. Well, thank you very much, person. <laughs> person who shall remain nameless. <laughs> I was like, are you asking Siri in the background of this? What's going on? Yes, yes, yeah, Siri, but much more muscular. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what was the last one? The word okay. that come up the 2020 one. for me? Yes, one word to describe 2020. Ooh, I would say the most rewarding. It's the most rewarding because I'm watching my children flourish. I'm knowing that my film may come out this year or next year. Or that's, that's great too. But the most meaningful thing that's happening is that my children who just suffered a lot in the foster care system are flourishing now. And that's the most meaningful thing about 2020. Let's call it recovery. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Sia, you are such an amazing person. And again, your light has always shined, but I think it's shined even more in 2020. Again, with all of your messages and your awareness and the use of your platform. So we are playing together on V96. We love it. We are looking forward to, I know, new music with David Guetta coming. And of course, your movie, Music, we will be the first to watch here in (laughs) Chicago. You did great, babe. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You did better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing a quick.